Hey guys, welcome back to Dream Framer Photography. Today I'm going to try to give you an answer to 10 most common questions I get from stock photography beginners. Let's start with the question number one. Does it cost money at all to join and upload photos for sale? The answer to this question is no. Never fall for a website that is asking you money to join or even worse to upload your photos. None of the big stock photo websites do that. What they do is they take a percentage of each sale you make and that's it. All those new websites that pop up every now and then asking you money to join or upload your photos, they usually last for a few months and then they just disappear with your money of course. All the big names in stock photography are uploading their images for free to big stock photo websites and you should do the same because those websites have enough money to advertise, they already have a huge database of images and a huge database of customers. So that's the place where you want to offer your product. Question number two is the question I usually get from people who just started uploading their images and they have maybe five or six images online. They ask me, why don't I have any sales yet? This business is not a business where you can get rich overnight. This is the business where your money grows as your portfolio grows. So you need to make a bigger portfolio if you want to see some sales, at least 50 or 60 images on few websites. The only website where you can see sales right away after you upload your first photo is Shutterstock. They give some kind of a boost to new images. But to join Shutterstock, you need to be at least 18 years of age and you need to pass the test. All other websites are slower and you have to wait to see some sales. But trust me, don't lose patience and don't lose hope. Just keep uploading and the sales will come. Question number three is, can I sell the same photo on more than one stock photo website? Yes, you can, and I strongly advise you to do it. There are websites that offer exclusive contracts. If you sign an exclusive contract with any website, you will not be able to sell your images elsewhere. But this website will give you a little bit more money for each sale you make. However, I don't think this is a good idea because it was happening in the past that those websites get acquired by some other company, so you end up with a completely different company and probably different rules. Sometimes the website just gets shut down and then you have to build your portfolio again on some other website, which is not, not fun at all. So my advice is always upload your images to at least four or five different websites, which leads us to the question number four. And the question number four is, let's say I have started uploading images to two stock websites, A and B. And let's say that on the website A, I have 10 downloads, while on B, I have zero. In addition to that, on B, the minimum payout is higher. So why should I put stuff on multiple stock websites? Maybe better to concentrate only on the good website. After all, if my 10 sales are spread between the two, the payout will be harder to reach. Since I already explained why I don't think it's a good idea to upload all your images to only one website, I'm gonna stick to the second part of the question, which is spreading the sales or diluting the sales between website A and website B. You see the thought that your sales are gonna be diluted between these two websites is just an illusion. And here's why. Website A has one group of customers. Website B has another group of customers. It's like people who like to go to this store and people who don't like that store, but they like to go to that store. Those are two different groups of customers. People usually make just one account online on the website where they want to buy pictures. They're not making multiple accounts and comparing the prices. So if you sell more on the website A, that doesn't mean that you're gonna sell less on the website B. It just means that you are offering your product to higher number of customers, which means higher potential to sell something. Question number five. Will I get paid if I upload my images as royalty free? Royalty free doesn't mean that the image is free. Royalty free is the name of the license. So what does it mean royalty free? It means there is no royalty and royalty is a fee that somebody who is using your stuff is paying every time they use it. 
let's say you created a song and you are selling the song. So a radio station buys that song from you. They want to play it. They have to pay to you every time they play the song and that fee that they are paying is called royalty. You're getting royalty every time they play the song. This is not the case with royalty-free images. Royalty-free images are the images that people buy, they pay for them, you get money for them, but then they can use that image in multiple projects without paying over and over again. Question number six, how do I get paid? Do I need to register a bank account or PayPal? This is how it goes. Let's say you had enough sales on the stock website and the website wants to send you money. They usually offer few options to send you money. The most common option is through PayPal. The second most popular, I believe, is through Skrill, which is another company very similar to PayPal. The third option is usually they can send you a check. However, sending a check to another country other than the United States, I mean, is probably very complicated to process in those banks over there and I don't know how much money you'll get if you do that so the best options are to create a PayPal account or Skrill account I'm gonna link both companies in the description of this video down there so when you register your PayPal account or Skrill account then you put that email address on the website where uh, you sell your images so the website knows where to send the money and then when they send you money the money shows up in your PayPal or your Skrill account you can use that money to shop online and also I don't know about Skrill but I know that PayPal offers in some countries debit cards which are free so you can order a debit card which is I believe Visa card and uh, it will arrive to your address and if you have any money on your PayPal account, you can use that card to pay in, in regular stores. If you want to transfer your money from PayPal or Skrill account to your bank, you have to connect your PayPal account or your Skrill account with the account in your bank. That's the process I can't describe here because it has few steps and I might make a tutorial on that, but this is how it goes. You can use money directly from your PayPal or Skrill account or you can transfer it to your bank and then use money with your bank card. Most stock photo websites have a minimum threshold that you have to reach in order to be paid. That threshold can be anything between $35 to $100 and some of those websites will send you money automatically whenever you reach the minimum threshold while other websites will ask you to request money by clicking on a button. This serves uh, to people who earn a lot per month so they don't want uh, money to be sent every time they earn $100. They just want to click a button and let's say receive $2,000. Question number seven, the question I get a lot is why is Shutterstock or Photolia or Dreamstime or iStock rejecting all my images? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question until I see the image. So send me your image, I'm going to analyze it, and I'm going to show you where the problem is so you can fix it. I know that the responses that reviewers send you are vague and not really clear, and that's because they use canned responses. They don't have time to type a personalized response for your image only. So send me your image, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with it. Question number eight, if there is a person in the picture and the person's face is not fully visible, do I need to get the model release signed for that? The answer is probably yes. As long as there is a person in the picture and the person could be recognized by somebody, you need a model release signed for that picture. Uh, the only case where you might not need a model release is if you take a picture of somebody's body part like hands, let's say, and there is no any specific feature on their hands, but it's still on the reviewer to decide about that. If there is a mole or a tattoo, you will still need a model release. Don't forget that if you can't obtain a model release, you can try to sell your photo as editorial photo. How to do that, I explained in another video and I'm gonna link that video down there in the description and also you can click on the card that showed up right now to see that video and learn how to do it.
Question number nine, one of those long questions with a short answer. What's the point of photography if I can't even take pictures of cool looking cars, bikes, buildings or people? And also, what if I take a picture of a place like city street or populated area and people get into my photo? If they get into my photo, it's not my fault. I'm not going to run around and ask 100 people to sign a model release for me. And many people will reject to sign anything in the first place. All these rules make being a photographer impossible. The answer to this question is yes, you can sell your images of cool stuff like bikes and cars and buildings and people and you don't have to ask anybody to sign anything if you sell these images as editorial. To learn how to do that, I already posted a link to my tutorial down there in the description of this video. This only means that people who buy your images will not be able to use them in advertising purposes, but they can use them in all other projects like um, educational websites and magazines and books, uh, informational websites, magazine books and all other stuff. And the last question, question number 10 is, let's say I want to take a photo of a sunset and the building comes into the picture. Will I need a property release signed? from the owner of that building? The answer to this question is most likely not. Um, the only cases when you will need a property release signed is if you take a picture of somebody's beautiful house and the house is the main subject in the picture, then you will need a property release. Or let's say you took a picture of a super modern looking building, like let's say London Eye or Sydney Opera, something that obviously looks like an architectural work of art. When I say super modern looking buildings, I don't mean uh, regular skyscrapers like um, downtown LA or downtown San Francisco, but there are some skyscrapers that are protected like uh, the Empire State Building for example or Eiffel Tower during the night because that light is actually copyrighted during the day is completely fine. And there is a list of those objects that are protected and I'm going to link that list down there in the description of this video so you can just take a look and see what's okay to take a picture of and what's not okay. Also, don't forget that you can always sell the image as editorial even if it has that protected building in the frame. So these were the most common questions I get from people who are just starting with stock photography. If you like this video, press that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, especially if you're planning on selling your photos online and stay well until the next video. Bye.